Welcome back to the class, everyone. Once upon a time, there was a period where you would only put Relic 7 on a character that was required to be there for a Galactic Legend farm, or they were already a legendary themselves and they were super powerful and it was a bit weird to not take them up that high. And maybe you're not out of that period quite yet, but if you are, or if you're just looking for something smart yet slightly educated to do with your Relic materials, do we have a video for you? So that really is going to be the major point here. We want to talk about a group of 10 characters who are underrated to be at Relic 7. And the big two requirements, actually I guess three requirements, to be in this video is A, they can't already be required for a Galactic Legend at Relic 7, which is actually a lot of characters because I, I would want to put Fennec or General Luke or General Skywalker or CLS all on this list. And it seems a bit silly because you probably were already doing those anyways for the respective Galactic Legends. In addition to that, they also can't be a legendary themselves that would already be uber powerful like Bane. And again, kind of weird not to already take them to Relic 7. And the third criteria is they have to be good. We're not just picking non-legendary, non-requirement characters that are bad. So first up is going to be Enfys Nest herself. And the reason why I love to put her on this list is because when she does reach those higher Relic levels at Relic 7 or maybe even a little bit before it, her base health is going to get high enough to pretty much box out Troopers and CLS from beating any defensive team that you put her on because how we're not going to go into her whole kit but basically how it works is every single time she takes a hit she's going to get 40 percent bonus protection stacking that cannot be dispelled it's not going away you would have to actually overpower it and this is really problematic to get through once it stacks to a really high amount and typically the answer to this is just oh let Empress Nest take a turn and then you hit her with a few big hits let her take a turn hit her with another big hit and she'll eventually die CLS and Imperial Troopers and a few other teams out there that are really turn meter oriented will never let Emphis Nest take a turn, almost no matter what you do, just because of how the mechanics of those teams work. So by taking her to high relics and throwing her on one of those defensive teams, there are people who can finesse it just right to be able to kill her still at relic seven. But for the most part, most players are not going to be able to. It takes a little bit more thought into it, let's say when you put her on a new team and you're gonna actually have to let extortion ride to be able to buy yourself enough time to let her to take a turn. But again, that's a kind of a finessing situation that most people aren't going to be able to go into. Next up is going to be Hondo, and the reason why Hondo is here is purely because he's a very stat-driven character. He is a good character, like we said at the very beginning here, but he has some specific things in his kit that when you give him higher relics, he is going to be able to leverage even more. His Ransom gives him a lot of stat-based boosts, like 2% max health and tenacity for every single stack he has. When you increase his relic levels, his health goes up. So you get to double down on that, not only by getting it through his base stats, but by getting it through essentially what his unique is doing. On top of that, you also get the health and protection recovery, which gets to take more advantage of it even more. And then even going down, he even gets some offensive boosts that don't really directly tie into the relics. But as his offense is scaling, you're getting to use that scaling critical damage and defense penetration as well and he's going to hit even harder and allowing him to either cause more problems on defense when people aren't using night sister cheese or just to be able to power up even more against targets on offense so that he can actually kill things while he's avoiding every single attack next up is going to be vandor which is our third scoundrel in a row that was not intentional but i also am not against it and the reason why vandor is on this list is because he does so much he has the tank tag, which does kind of make a little bit of sense in the sense that you really need to go after him first and he needs to die before you can get to the other characters. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, he has a revive. So if he revives all the other characters, you kind of have to kill him first. And the other reason is this, I actually really like this unique. Uh, in addition, all enemies deal 25% less damage while Chewbacca is buffed that is incredible that makes it way harder to get through a lot of the other obstacles that are in the team and it actually even makes it harder to get through vander chewbacca himself so basically all that to say the reason why you would want him to be at higher relics is because if he's at lower relics or gear 12 or something like that and you're using him in a dash team or a wookie team and he gets killed 
he can't do anything that he wants to do at all in the way that he's protecting the rest of the team, both through the damage reduction and addition to the revives, more so on the dash team. So definitely something to consider at taking to high relics if you have them worked up, if you have them built into one of your scoundrel and or Wookiee teams. Up again, up again is going to be Mace. We've actually been talking a lot about how good Mace is. And the reason why he definitely wants to be on this list is not only is he a good tank, but in addition to that, He's a tank that doesn't really want to die. We've Again, we've talked about this a ton, but his shatter point ability really just destroys a lot of targets out there right now with re continually reducing their max defense, health, and offense by 10% for the rest of the battle. And there's no type of scaling cap on that. He can just keep doing it over and over again, making him really nice to take out those um, single target enemies that come in like Wampa or Nest or even more recently Sidious. I've seen Mace actually kill quite a few cities specifically because of that shatter point. And all that to say, if you leave him at Relic 5 or Relic 3, he might do the tanking part of what he's supposed to do all right, but ultimately I want him to tank and in addition to that, survive so that he can drain whatever enemy team that I'm trying to kill, whether it be Malgus or Savage or another, or Kersantan actually was another big one that I want him to just work down so I don't time out on the kill counter overall next up is going to be bosk the reason for this is fairly simple not only do you get a nice boost in overall stats that he can use on his team protection right there which is very critical for him the armor and resistance is also nice but in addition to that the hounds to ship is really important for sure if you have the executor for the bounty hunter fleet but even if you don't like Houndstooth gets used on almost every fleet. I guess with the, maybe the, I guess they have gotten better at sharing the tanks around, but he still can be used in a variety of places. And it seems to be a very good catch all pilot to take to higher relics just for the incremental stat boost, which we've typically been against. But in the case of Boss, where he's using all those so consistently at, with how the Houndstooth builds up that shell protection or protection up, it is very good. Next up is actually going to be Iden Versio. And we have talked about her specifically for her ship before. And the reason why is, yes, she does gain the incremental stats or whatever that aren't really all that important. But what I care more about in the stat department on the Defender is the evasion is actually a stat that will scale it with her relics, really with Iden entirely. The higher you take her up in almost all regards, the higher this dodge chance is going to get. And a Relic 7, 33% chance without even needing to have foresight. That's pretty good. That's enough to change the tide of the battle in most cases. And realistically, Iden at R7, that's not that bad of an investment in general. I realize the raid is about to go away, so that's kind of a bummer. But her character on ground still... I mean, it's maybe not top, top tier, but there's a, you can do a lot worse than that. And her damage is nice, so she can actually use the relic levels rather than just being a random pilot. Next up is going to be fives. We've talked about fives in this regard a lot before too. He's really not required for anything except for maybe cam. And even then there's kind of ways around that. And I don't, I don't even know if anyone's doing the cam mission anymore with how the rote TB has worked out. But at, at any rate, you really do want to have him at higher relic levels purely because the health and protection that he gains here. Not only does he have the opportunity to pass those on to his fellow clones when he dies through tactical awareness, assuming you're using an off offense, but even when you're wanting to put General Skywalker on defense, he needs to be as tanky as possible because if he's not, then they just chew immediately right through him and they can get to the rest of the clones. So he really, he's able to protect his allies no matter what you're doing, whether it's on offense or defense, defense actively tanking, or if you're using them on offense, just sharing all those health protection stats to the rest of the team to continue protecting them beyond his death, which is very lore accurate. And I love how they worked that into his kit. Next up is going to be Dark Trooper. We've talked about Dark Trooper before as well when in regards to relic levels. The reason why he's on this list is because while you do get almost an unlimited amount of offense from Pied's Emperor's Trap. You do get, where is it here? Armor penetration built into his Relic modifier, which is, is really important, especially for characters out there that have some type of stacking defense mechanic. This helps get through them a lot quicker or just get through them at all so you don't get stuck behind something stupid like crew. Although you could realistically, you can, you'll probably get through most crews out there that aren't in a Lord Vader squad. I guess that's the example that I'm thinking of with a lower than Relic 7 Dark Trooper. But overall, good gains on him. Next up is going to be BT1, and we've titled him The Real Legend because I feel like this needs to be said for everyone who's unlocking Afra about now. I realize there are people who unlocked Afra a long time ago that needed her Relic 7 for her data crown at the time. But if you're unlocking Afra now, do not take her to Relic 7 before you take BT1. If you want to do both, that's fine. I mean, she's better at higher relics. The survivability is nice. 
but this dude wants it way more. Realistically, he's probably more built for a Relic 8 tier list, but I have him at Relic 7 right now, and that seems to be working just fine for most of the team's emails. And the reason why is just he gets everything he wants. He gets Critical Chance, he gets Armor Pen, he gets damage, and then he just uses it to his fullest extent because he's a really good damage-dealing attacker who can not only do damage, but he can also be called in to assist by his buddy triple zero to do even more and then he gains turn meter he, he's, he's he's a monster and last but not least is going to be wampa a character that is required at relic three for a giant luke but really i do really like him at relic seven and the reason is very similar to that of hondo is that he's a very stat driven character especially when it comes to gac he's getting these huge percent bonuses based on his defense max health max protection offense and every single little bit of those stats that he gets through taking him to higher relic levels like relic seven he's going to be able to leverage them even more his health is not only going to be his health it's going to be his bonus protection his protection up i forget which terminology is used but either way it's based off of max health and then in addition to that the there's more damage to behold there's more armor penetration to build and that doesn't stack but still if you have stacking offense in there and then you're going to be able to use the damage penetration it does add up and add nicely together so overall that is going to be our video 10 characters that are, i think are really underrated and most people don't have at r7 just because they're not requirements and they're not really seen as maybe the big bad legendary that needed to be at the highest relic level possible so thank you guys for watching let me know in the comments which ones you think we missed and until next time stay awesome <laughs>